are one of the main European electricity transmission grid operators. We manage Italy's high voltage transmission grid, one of the most modern and technologically advanced grid in Europe. Our industrial plan supports our role and shows how Terna is both a central player in enabling the transition of electricity market based on renewable energy sources and an even more strategic leader of the major energy transmission process. The United Nations has set its Global Goals Agenda, which focuses on 17 targets designed to stop poverty, protect the planet, and guarantee a new sustainable development. The goals were adopted in 2015, after a long consultation process in order to achieve a sustainable and inclusive society. This is, of course, a challenge that requires immediate actions Time is running out. Climate emergency and the erosion of natural resources is getting faster and faster. The effects on climate change are clear and affect our daily lives. These goals are crucial to align all common efforts made by governments, companies and communities. Terna can and must play its part on some of these goals. Goal 7 affordable and clean energy. Goal 9, industry, innovation and infrastructure. Goal 13, climate action. Goal 17, partnership for the goals. So, we are working within an energy transition scenario. Energy transition means, first of all, eliminating all CO2 emissions as well as all gas emissions within 2050. This is an amazing challenge. Italy has set the first goal in its integrated national energy and climate plan, namely to reduce emissions by 55% within 2030 and then reach zero emission in 2050, as defined in the European New Green Deal. The key actions and main tools indicated to reach these goals are 80-90% of power generation coming from renewables within 2050, which means about 90% of energy produced by renewable sources. Important developments on the grids to have better and digitalized interconnections, energy efficiency and electric heating systems use of batteries to support carbon-free power generation, green transportation, which means massive use of electric or low-emission vehicles. In order to achieve these goals, the Green New Deal foresees 1 trillion euro for investments in 10 years. About half of this trillion will be invested in sectors in which we operate, and about 100 billion will be related to grids. Indeed, our National Development Plan provides more than 14 billion of investments in the next 10 years. The National Integrated Energy and Climate Plan foresees that Italy will move from the current about 18% of renewable share on total gross final energy consumption to 30% in 2030. This means moving from less than 120 gigawatt to 155 gigawatt of overall installed capacity. Within this capacity, photovoltaic should increase from the current more than 20 gigawatt to 52 gigawatt in 2030. This means an extra 30 gigawatt, a real revolution. If we focus on the evolution of the system in the last few years, we can see that until 2000, we dispatched energy coming from 800 power plants, up and running, and we are going to reach 1 million of energy generation plants in Italy. A confirmation of what we just said is represented by the 6 gigawatt of connection demand Terna has received for 2024, 
which in 10 years will become about 15 gigawatt. But this is not enough to achieve our domestic goals, so we need to fill in this gap. Currently, Italy is well placed at European level. Indeed, in recent years, we managed several days with more than 50% of the demand covered by renewables. On annual basis, the average was about 40%. However, the target is still far away and this goal represents our great challenge for the future. Terna plays a central role to achieve the goals foreseen in this transition time. Our role is evolving. We are not only an operator, we are now becoming a system enabler. The main tools for the energy transition will be first, investment on the grid designed to integrate non-programmable renewables, increase new security and resiliency of system, solve all bottlenecks also by reinforcing international interconnections. Second, new storage capacity to make the system work and minimize over generation. Third, the development and the coming into operation of renewables. It's important to highlight that all our goals will always be aligned with the regulator in order to guarantee the security of supply at the lowest cost possible for the final user. So we need to make the right investments in order to ensure a safe system. Given this challenging scenario, our strategy is based on a further acceleration on green investment to allow the transition towards sustainable energy. I wish to emphasize once again that the investments will be realized to increase also grid sustainability. Terna was born sustainable, but every action must include and support this process of deep change. It is clear that everything including our company and our way of working is now changing. Activities are becoming more digitalized and full of innovation and sustainable targets. All these changes will have to be managed and supported. Our ambition is to stay turn a central role in the energy transition process. We are the two enables, the director of the system. Our plan is challenging and also in line with the goals to relaunch our country. Our investments are not only enabling the system, but they represent a plan to start up work sites and create new jobs. Indeed, let me underline that each investment we make generates two or three times more in terms of GDP. If we invest 10 billion, we generate 20 or 30 billions of GDP. What we have just described and our role bring us to a long-term capex plan of over 14 billion in the next 10 years, the National Development Plan. This is where our five-year plan comes from. Our 2021-2025 industrial plan foresees domestic regulated capex for almost 9 billion compared to 7.3 billion in the previous plan. As a consequence, the value of our regulated asset will increase from 16.7 billion euro to 21.8 billion, with an average annual growth rate of 6% during the plan. It is important to highlight that these investments generate higher benefits compared to their costs, supporting a strong growth also beyond the plan period. This is a challenging plan that foresees a strong acceleration in terms of execution, but also in terms of authorization and supply. However, we are aware that the needs of the system are so great that we are able to guarantee this level of investments regardless of the single project. So, if we slow down on some project, we can manage to speed up on others. Development CAPEX will amount to 5.4 billion euro. 
The overall increase foresees a great contribution coming from age woody sea, namely the undersea cables. Within this context, the Tyrrhenian link connecting Campania, Sicily and Sardinia will lead to a great increase in volumes. The remaining known ace woody sea installations include interconnections, projects to reduce bottlenecks and integrate renewables, and as well as to increase the quality of service. It's important to highlight that about 70% of these investments are focused on achieving the national integrated energy and climate plan targets and will lead to a reduction of about 1.5 million tons of CO2. The asset renewable and efficiency plan mainly foresees the replacement of existing lines with underground cables. It includes projects aimed at increasing the quality of service and improving processes by digitalizing substations and implementing predictable maintenance techniques for the environment, for instance, by replacing all fluid oil cables and installing vegetable oil equipment. The new plan foresees an overall 2.4 billion euro for renewables. The defense plan has a value of 1.2 billion euro accumulated during the plan. This plan includes works for improving our ability to provide a technical and technological response to the needs of the system in order to have increased the functionality of the system itself. We are talking about investment on regulating machines such as synchronous compensators, resistors and statcoms, investments on a new control and defense system and on infrastructure security. Regarding Resiliency 2.0, it represents a new kind of works focused mainly on increasing grid resiliency in case of extreme weather events that are unfortunately becoming more and more common due to the climate change. We are talking of a state-of-the-art method to evaluate the benefit of these works, bearing in mind also the climate risks and the vulnerability of the assets. Up to now, we have spoken about our core business. As you know, our non-regulated activities are represented by energy solutions, services on high voltage grid infrastructures and smart grid solutions like the energy efficiency services offered by Avenia. Connectivity, thanks to strategic assets of 35,000 kilometers of optical fiber. More specifically, we are talking about providing TLC operators with dark fiber and hosting housing services, as well as elaborating and distributing the large amount of data that we can collect. Industrial activities offered by our company Stamini & Brug. In this regard, our aim is to increase the value of these assets. For what concerns Stamini, this means having a more efficient industrial process, increasing quality and developing more innovative products. Regarding Brooks, we confirm the value of this acquisition focused on insourcing key skills in the cables industry. In terms of ABDA, non-regulated activities will contribute for about 450 billion euro accumulated in five years. Finally, for what concerns these activities, we confirm a low risk profile and a limited capital absorption approach. For what concerns international activities, we already built an interesting position in Latin America. We have foreseen during the plan accumulated capex lower than 300 million euro for potential new projects. Indeed, our goal is to maintain our position in these countries, not only for their growth rates, but also to increase our know-how and consolidate our international skills, maintaining a low-risk profile and a limited capital absorption. 
in terms of IBD, international activities will contribute for over 200 million euro accumulated during the plan. Up to now, we have spoken about hardware, namely the physical investments on the grid and technologies. However, there is also the software, which is represented by our new way of working and by all those activities that should favor, help and allow to implement this new model. We are talking about a possible real estate rationalization, namely optimizing our offices and their use, for instance, through virtual offices, distributed offices and co-working with other companies. Space in which people can find not only their tools, but also a community. This means increasing flexibility to optimize this way of working and, at the same time, guarantee functionality, logistic benefits and quality of life. Therefore, we have to guarantee adequate infrastructures promote sociability and company culture. Review training methods also including virtual options as well as review our performance assessment systems. We already set up a steering committee focusing on analyzing and planning activities that will be implemented starting in the first half of 2021. In order to achieve these goals, we need a great digitalization plan. Tools need to be more effective, more powerful, interactive and modern. This is a huge opportunity to consider technology as a great enabler for the change. IT and digital tools must be well used and solid. That is why we also need to put at the center the cybersecurity. Most important of all, these tools have to be well accepted within the organization in order to have a cultural change. And this brings us back to the change we said before. An important technological tool will be data-driven decision-making, using the great amount of data we have. Indeed, the more we go on, the more we will need to manage data in real time with artificial intelligence. On top of this, integration from renewable we require more sophisticated forecast and planning tools for the grid. Finally, let me also mention robotics, which is and will be extremely important for maintenance activities. Therefore, we will invest about 900 million euro in innovation and digitalization during the plan, all included in the regulated capex. After having illustrated our strategic levers and management actions for a zine in the next five years, I would like to give you the guidance for 2021 and 2025, confirming first of all the 2020 guidance already provided. Indeed, for what concerns 2021, we foresee 2.57 billion euro of revenues and an MBDA of 1.84 billion. 2021 EPS will be 39 euro cents. In 2021, we plan capex of 1.4 billion, while 2021-2025 cumulated capex will reach 9.2 billion euro. For what concerns 2025, we foresee 3.04 billion euro of revenues and an EBDA of 2.21 billion, while EPS will reach 49 euro cents. From 2021 to 2023, we also foresee a compound annual growth rate of our dividend per share of 8%, compared to 2020 dividend. For the remaining years of the plan, we foresee a 75% payout ratio. As far as our financial structure is concerned, despite the great capex increase for the system, the company is committed to maintain a strong financial structure during the plan. Also through actions on the debit side, aimed at keeping the financial leverage under control. 
in particular regarding the main financial ratios, these will be always kept at a sustainable level in line with the threshold indicated by the rating agencies for our current rating level. Therefore, the average cost of net debt for resin in the plan will be 1.3%. To conclude this presentation, let me say that in the next years, we will be focused on accelerating regulated domestic activities, our core business, in order to reinforce and confirm Terna's central role for the system and for the energy transition. Our investments will be a driving force to relaunch our country and will represent a great contribution to post-COVID recovery. Non-regulated and international activities will continue being an important support to our core business, always with a low risk profile and limited capital absorption. Innovation and digitalization will be the key for the transition and the new way of working. Despite CapEx acceleration, we will remain committed to guarantee financial stability. All this represents the foundation on which Terna's central and constantly evolving role will be built. We will reinforce ourselves as a TSO, being ready to develop potential new strategic perimeters, leveraging on business expansion opportunities, consistently with our role of directors of the system. Within a 10-year horizon, opportunities could arise from expanding our perimeter, from developing hydro pumping storage, supporting renewables generation, and from a more active role in renewables growth. As far as the hydro pumping storage development, Terna is ready to help the system in market failure situations. Given the needs provided by the National Integrated Energy and Climate Plan in terms of renewables installed capacity, Terna could increase its role of a turnkey provider of renewables development projects. Given the different time horizon and the absence, for the time being, of the right regulatory and legal framework, these initiatives are of course excluded from our industrial plan. But we consider them important if the country really wants to accelerate its energy transition process, being able to meet the ambitious national and European goals. Terna is and will always be there to play its role.